makeup. Ah. <laughs> Anyways, hi guys. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Veronica, aka Little Miss Skin Expert. Today is all about waxing and how I use, how I do it, and what I use. So without further ado, let's get started. Well, hi guys. Happy Friday. Happy No Glam Friday. <laughs> Actually, um, what I was thinking of doing today is doing a waxing demonstration for you guys. For those of you who are interested in learning how to wax your face. So, without further ado, let's get started. Just talk about the, um, the basics in knowing what to do prior to your appointment if you're going in to get a waxing service done. Um, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that you are clean. <laughs> the reason why I say this is because then you won't be as susceptible to any bacteria infections. Um, even though the esthetician may prep you with your skin, they'll clean the surface, they'll either oil it or powder it to get it prepped. Um, it's still a good idea to make sure that your skin is clean. So that's the number one thing. If I am the client that's getting waxed and I have the appointment set up um, and I'm getting it done on my face, um, I will typically not wear any makeup. Now, if I'm coming from work to my appointment, I probably do have makeup on. I wouldn't worry about it too much. The esthetician will then clean the skin surface that they're waxing, and so that's that. But if you are able to, I highly recommend just not wearing any makeup. It's not necessary. Now this is really important. For clients that are using leave-on exfoliants, I typically recommend stop using them for a couple days to a week. And the reason for that is because it allows the skin to toughen up because when you use leave-on exfoliants, it does thin out the skin a bit. Um, that's because the new skin is apparent and so um, you're a little bit more susceptible to, I hate saying it because it gives me the heebie-jeebies. Is the, tearing the skin off so um, now if the client is prepped well that can be avoided as well but it's just a good idea to just not use any alpha hydroxy acids prior to a waxing service the areas that I wax on myself is usually my underarms or my face um, I usually probably do my underarms more than I do my face though let's just start on the you know doing the face that's really what I want to focus this video tutorial on so this is actually a toner that I have I had to put it in this bottle because I busted the bottle but uh, the company that makes it is Serapil you can actually buy um, one by Satin Smooth that's another company um, this is what the name is Satin Smooth um, and they also make any kind of prepping solution um, basically it's a toner so you could also use a toner I use a hard wax so the hard wax requires an oil to be uh, applied to the skin prior to the um, wax and it helps it adhere to the skin it also helps from tearing the skin I'm also gonna put a headband on just because I want to make sure my hair is pulled back okay first now this is the wax that I use. This is by Serapil. Um, I get this usually at Cosmoprof. It's only for licensed um, professionals. However, you can probably buy it online. I used to buy it through Alexander Aesthetics and at uh, Esthetician Shows. Um, that's actually the best place to get it. Anyways, that's the wax I'm gonna be using today. It is a hard wax, so meaning there are no strips involved. So let's get started. Okay, so when using a hard wax, you do need a lot of it. And basically, you're just going to apply it very, very thickly along the area that you want waxed. And it's a little complicated to get used to at first, but once you um, get used to it, it's fine. So now I'm going to allow this to dry. Well, it's hard to do this and talk. Okay, so now that it's pretty, you know, dry, now what I'm going to do is hold the skin taut. And rip it off so it's hard to see but you can kind of see a little bit of the fuzz from the wax uh, and the hair sticking into the wax and that's what I like about this wax is not only is it flexible but I like the fact that the idea behind hard waxes is that it adheres to the hair only and you in return the client has is, uh, has less irritation because you know, when you use a strip wax on the face, yes, you do a very excellent job in re hair removal, 
but it can be very hard on a sensitive skin client. So it took me, you know, some time to get trained and learn how to use this kind of a wax. So, you know, that is something to keep in mind. You know, I wouldn't say like a new person to go and just buy it and then just, oh yeah, you're going to be a, an expert now. You know how to do it. It does take practice. So give yourself time on learning how to do to use that kind of a wax. Now let's just say that you miss some hairs. You can go over it a second time. I wouldn't go over it a third time just because then you kind of, you're thinning out the skin or you're potentially going to um, hurt the skin. So I would only do it no more than twice. So that is also something to remember. See, if you wanted to do your upper lip, this one sucks, <laughs> but if you do it right, it's not too bad. We are gonna have a Kool-Aid lip. I go all the way, dude. No hairs are missed. So the way I do it is you put your lips together like this. And what that does is it helps when you put your lips together it actually helps keep the skin more tall. You guys ready for the mustache side? Putting your lips together will help the skin be more taut. Pressing down on the wax is also going to help the wax to adhere best to the hair. Hmm. Now, after you wax yourself, um, you should have something that has anti-inflammatory ingredients in it. Um, one that I've picked up that I like is one by Clean and Easy. It is an after wax hair inhibitor. Inhibitor meaning that it slows down the hair growth. Um, hair has three phases. It's um, anaphase, uh, cataphase, and telophase. So once it's in the telophase phase is when you want to wax and that means that it's at its peak. The main reason I like this guy is because it has a lot of anti-inflammatory properties in there for clients, and not many of my clients have been, um, have had issues with it. So you just put it over the area that you've just waxed, and voila. So, so aftercare is so important. So first off is, is you wanna avoid any hot tubs, any kind of pools, um, things that you'll be susceptible to bacteria uh, for the next four hours and that just allows the skin and the hair because now you've pulled out and yanked out hair it's kind of like ah freaking out mode and that's why it's kind of red and so you'll want it to just kind of calm down and it usually takes a few hours to do so next thing is is um, like if you're a makeup wearer and you're like wanting to put some makeup on don't <laughs> Don't do it, okay? Um, you can put sunscreen on, that's fine, but try to avoid any kind of makeup application until after your four hours minimum. Um, I usually won't put any makeup on at all for the rest of the day just because I don't need to, I don't care. But I mean, if you're somebody who's like, I need to put my makeup on, then wait at least four hours. Now, to avoid potential ingrown hairs, the next day, 24 hours is now passed, or less than maybe 24 hours, you're in the shower. I would suggest using a scrub, a washcloth, or your Clarisonic. And what this will do, it'll allow this, the hair in the area to um, be less prone to a breakout, as well as keep the movement from like skin overlaying on top of the hair area and getting ingrown so that's important and then you'll just you know if you have a leave-on exfoliant definitely apply that like at night and that will also help reduce your likelihood of ingrown hairs now it is normal for a client to break out especially if you are new to waxing so what i would suggest is either doing a leave-on exfoliant such as the beta hydroxy acid by paula's choice um, it looks like this <laughs> and you can use this um, after you wash your face and then just apply it um, all over the skin and then the other thing too to, is start doing it on a regular basis so the more you do it the more your skin and hair starts to acclimate to getting the procedure done and you will be less prone to ingrowns as a technician on the technician side 
it is important for my clients to regularly book and pre-books because then you are now on a scheduled routine. And so I usually tell my clients come in every three weeks versus every two weeks, even with the hair growth. Some people just have rapid hair growth and they need to come in a little bit sooner. However, it has a lot to do with the phases of the hair. I need them all to be at the last phase in order to get a successful hair removal process done. So we just went over the type of wax that I like to use, how to wax a surface, how to prep the skin, and your aftercare for waxing. Let me know in the comments below if you guys have any questions about waxing or uh, any trouble that you guys have bumped into. Maybe I can answer some questions. And um, yeah, just comment below. Anyways, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed this little mini waxing tutorial. And I'll see you guys in the next video. See ya.